Hello, this is Bashar. In this tutorial, we will see the profile functionality of Spring Boot. For this tutorial, we are using the Spring email project again. You can find the repository right here. And in the previous tutorials, we have implemented the email send functionality. And then we externalized our configuration. Now we are going to see how the profile is working and you can find the changes we are going to do in this tutorial in this final profile branch. We are going to do our implementation on top of this final ext configuration. This is for the externalizing configuration tutorial and we will be applying profile on top of this one. I've already cloned this repository and it is opened right here in the Visual Studio Code. And here, as you can see, we are on the final ext config branch. Let's go over the project structure. So here in the POM XML, running the Spring Boot version 2.4, running Java version 11, we have this mail dependency, web dependency, and the others are for the development tools. And if we check the source right here, we have this main class and we have the configuration this mail configuration and we were using that one right here in the Java mail sender implementation part. Now in this tutorial we are going to see how we can group the configurations for different environments and we will do it by using the profile functionality of Spring Boot. Let's start with a simple configuration. Let's say we have a property right here in the application properties and let's say this is message and the, the message is hello and when we are using this one let's say let's use it right here in the email application java we can just inject it like this with the value annotation and in double quotes dollar sign curly braces and the message is the key name right here this one and we assign it to a variable of message right here. Then we can use it in a bean and let's create a bean. This is command line runner. Spring is going to be calling this one when the application is initialized and we are going to return a new instance of command line runner. I'm just going to implement the lambda function version this is an interface. Uh, it has this run method, which is taking an argument array. And so we will be implementing that method. So it takes args and the arrow function here. And let's just print the message. Let's say just system print line, the message. Let's save this one. Let's run the application. And here we are seeing the message is printed. Now let's say that our application will run in two environments. One of them is the production and the other one is development. And in each of these environments, we expect this message to be different. So just like using different e email configurations, for instance, we may be using our local email server or this ethereal email for our development environment but in production we want to use a production uh, email server so consider this message like that one to achieve that we can create properties files just like this one for the environments of the production and the development now let's create a new properties file there is a naming convention right here and the properties file starts with the application. Then we have this dash. Then the, the, the text we are entering here will be our profile name. So let's say this is for production. Then the extension of the file is properties. And in this properties, we can just add the same key right here and let's say for this one and let's say this message is production message currently this doesn't change anything in the application uh, when our application is restarted this log 
this part will be printing out the the message we have here that's because the application properties is considered as the default properties file and it is not specific to any profile it is applied when the application is initialized and in the properties file in this application properties file we can define our actual profile name and we do that by spring profiles active and we can give the name of our profile which is production so saving this one so if we check the console log right here as you can see in this line the following profiles are active and it is saying it is production but if we check the the message right here it is saying hello which is the property coming from the application properties it's not reading the value coming from the the message and that's happening because development tools are not picking this newly added properties file so the default value in the application properties is used in our bean right here so what we can do here is i'm just killing this console and going into the director of the project clearing the screen now i'm going to run the application via maven commands and first let's clean the project and i'm going to run mvnw clean then we can append the next command which is mvnw spring dash boot colon run now the application is initialized here we can see the following profiles are active and the same production and here we see the production message so with this way this application production properties the value coming from this file is used in the application so just like this production we can create another profile and let's say this one is going to be for the development and let's say this is just a dev and in the dev we have the message let's say this is the development message so to run our application in dev mode all we need to do is just change this active profile from production to dev again saving it now we are seeing the active profile is dev but we are seeing the message hello is printed because again this properties file this newly added one is not added to the application uh, because of the dev tools are not able to pick them uh, in the, the build process so that's why this message is not found in a file of the application dev properties therefore the default value for this one which is coming from the default properties file is injected right here and that's why we are printing that message again killing this application with ctrl c and running the same command clean then spring boot run and if we check the logs once again here it is saying the following profiles are active the, the profile is dev and here we have the message develop message which is coming from this application dev properties so just like setting this message property we can set the mail host or mail port in these profiles so in the application dev the the mail server will be pointing to something else and in production we can point it to some other mail server we can also combine multiple profiles we can assign mul multiple profiles to this property and we can do that by uh, adding them with comma separation so let's apply both dev and production production saving it now the application is restarted now if we check the logs right here here we can see the active profiles are dev and production if we check the, our log here it is saying it is production message so when using multiple profiles at the same time pay attention to the order 
if you have conflicting values in them. So for our case, this dev and the production, both are having the message. So they are having different values for the message property, but th there can be only one message. Uh, otherwise, Spring cannot distinguish which, which message to inject right here. So it is picking one of them and the decision is based on the order we have here. The last item in this array overrides the previous ones. So the production value is overriding the development value for this property. So if we change their orders, if we move the dev to the end and move the production to the first, let's say this one, here we see the development message. So be careful when using multiple profiles and pay attention to their orders for the conditions where they have conflicting properties. Instead of having these multiple properties files, we can gather all the profiles in a single file. And we can do that by using YAML file instead of properties. So let's do that. Let's create a new file. Let's call this one application YAML. We're setting the properties in YAML format. So this one is spring um, profiles active and in the properties we have both production and dev active and in yaml this is an array assignment like this the production and the dev and we also have the assignment for the message let's do that one here let's say this is default message now we can add different profile sections to this file and we can do that by adding triple dashes. This is separating sections. This one is considered as the default part, just like this application properties. And the one in this block is another profile section. So in this part, we can define our profile name by spring profiles, and we can assign a value to it. Let's say this is production. And in the production, the message is going to be production message. And just like this one, we can have another profile right here. And this is for dev. And the message in dev mode is development message. So saving this. And now we can remove the others. Removing this properties files. Now the application is not picking this new, newly added file. So killing this console and running the application once again with this MVN clean and MVN Spring Boot run. Now in this one, here we are seeing the development message is printed. Just like in the properties files, we can change their orders so if we move the dev before production, let's see what's going to happen. Here we are still seeing the development message. And if we check the, the, the profile names here, it is saying that the first one is the dev, the second one is the production. But as you can see, the next one, the last one coming in this list is not overriding the value. So in the YAML, the behavior is different. The order is not dependent on the profile names we are using in this property. The behavior is used to be just like the one we see in the properties. This order was important, but in the Spring Boot version 2.4, this order is not considered anymore. Instead of this one, the order of the profiles seen in this file is considered so the dev profile is coming after the production therefore the values in the dev profile is applied when both are used so if we change their order let's move this dev before production and let's save this one and here the application is restarted and here we are seeing the production message is printed so the 
The difference between the YAML and the properties is like this. When you are using multiple profiles in YAML, pay attention to their order in the appearance of this application YAML file. But when you are using properties file, make sure you pay attention to the, the appearance of the profile names in this Spring Profiles active property. We can also use this profile information in our application when creating beans. So let's uh, do that one too. Let's say we want this part to be run only in specific uh, profile. So for that one we can use profile annotation right here and we can say this is going to be running only in production. Or we can say it like this. If we are not running in production, run this command. So we can use the profile name or the not uh, the excl exclamation mark to to exclude that specific profile uh, to run this part. But let's say this is going to be running for the production. And just like this one, let's add another one right here. And this is going to be running in dev mode. Let's change the method name as run dev. And for this one, this will be printed in dev mode. So let's save this and changing this part. Here in the logs, we can see both the production message, which is coming from this one, this part, and the other one, this will be printed in dev mode. So both are printed because we are currently setting both of the profiles as active. But if we keep one of them, let's remove the production and let's save this. Currently we are having only this dev. So in the console log, we only have this will be printed in dev mode part. The other one is not printed. Or if we just change this to production, we won't be seeing this message. This will be printed in dev mode. We are only seeing this production message, which is coming from this message value. So with the profiles, we are able to set configurations specific to the environment. And also we are able to customize our application runtime behavior with using different implementation of our beans. So we can customize the beans we are using in our application based on the profiles. So that's all for this tutorial. Thanks for watching and hope to see you in the next tutorials.